One, two, one, two. All right, let's get started. Let's get started. I got a lot of ground to cover today. And uh, I kind of left off short last time. Uh, I'm going to open up in a word of prayer. And we're going to have a deep discussion today on Ezekiel 38. And what you need to walk through it. Because it looks like it's going to happen very quickly. Okay, it's, it's, it's building momentum as we're getting there. Lord, Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the days that you gave us and the days that you will give us. But, Lord, here we are, the church, congregated in your presence, Lord, to speak on your word, Lord, to gain wisdom for the times that are approaching us quickly, Lord. I pray that you give us open hearts, minds that understand, and ears that listen, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. As I was preparing this week for this, I mean, I felt a fire and a sensation that we needed to talk about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That we needed to understand the work of the Holy Spirit in the time that we're approaching. Okay? If you look at the Old Testament, you may say that our God was a judgmental God, a warring God, a God that slayed those that did not listen to him. Okay? Is he not sovereign? Jeremiah 18 says that he is sovereign. He can do as he wishes with the clay. So that's why he tells Isaiah, my ways are not your ways. Your ways are not my ways. So there's sometimes that we look at what God did in the Old Testament and how the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Testament, and we say, whoa. I had people accuse the church of saying, you follow a warring God. Okay, then we come to the New Testament, and God creates a new system through Jesus Christ, which is the church age, which is what we've been living for 2,000 years. Okay, but now we go back to where God settles everything, finally. Okay, it's an exciting time. It's a very scary time, and it's going to take one kind of church to walk through it. There's seven churches in Revelation. Those seven churches were seven ages and are seven that are present right now on the earth. All seven churches belong to the Lord. They were all his. He called them all his churches, okay? But he rebukes six and one he admonishes. The one that we want to be is the one he admonishes, the Philadelphia church. That's the one we have to be. That's the one that the Holy Spirit is going to move in during this time. Okay? So, some of us in this room are already, if not all of us, are filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to manifest himself during this time. So as our adversary increases in putting the pressure and bringing us to where he wants to bring us, so will the power of the Holy Spirit in this time. Okay? I've seen in my own life these past few months, in a real troubled time, I've seen the Holy Spirit move. Okay? I've seen him move. I'm going to read a verse to you now, and I'm going to read it to you when we get done. It's one of my favorite verses in the Bible. Malachi chapter 4. Malachi chapter 4. And this is what we're doing tonight. We all congregated here for this specifically tonight. And it says in Malachi chapter 4, verses 16 through 18, then those who, what, feared the Lord, talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. 
a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. This is what he says. I'm in Malachi 4, 4, uh, verse 16 to 18. They will be mine, says the Lord Almighty, in the day when I make up my treasured possession. I will spare them. That's the rapture, people. I will spare them. So what's it going to cause for you to be prepared for the rapture? The fear of the Lord. The fear. When we speak, when we live, when we talk, the way we walk, the fear of the Lord is what's going to prepare us for him to spare them just as in compassion a man spares his son who serves him and you will again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who do not. We're going to read a parable that Jesus gave. And that parable, you, every one of you know that parable. But that parable is very powerful, very scary, and we have to examine our heart when we read that parable. How many of you know the parable of the ten virgins? Ten virgins. Five of them don't have oil in their lamps. Those five women have been sitting in the church 20, 30, 40 years, but don't have the Holy Spirit. The other five have the Holy Spirit, and they have to make decisions while they're preparing for what? The master to come. The bridegroom, the wedding, the marriage, supper of the Lamb. That's 50%. If you look in America and we see 60 million Christians attending church, he's telling us, I'm not saying that. I'm not doing the math. The Word has already done the math. God says half of them ain't mine. They don't have the Holy Spirit. They're walking in dead bodies. I had a pastor this week talking. We were talking back and forth, and he says, I see this, I see this, I see this. I don't understand. And I I turned around and I told him, those people you're talking about, they weren't called. That's why there's no power in their message. That's why the people are not getting saved. That's why the church is not being transformed. That's why their children are still sinning, because there's no Holy Spirit operating inside of those leaders. Okay? We cannot be like that. If we don't, if you, if tonight you don't feel you have the Holy Spirit, we're going to pray that we get the Holy Spirit, okay? Because you're not going to make it through this time without the Holy Spirit. You're going to need the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. The ten virgins, five were ready and five were not. Five get left in the tribulation. Five possibly don't make it into the kingdom. Okay, let's go. You can't walk in without the Holy Spirit. Okay, Luke 12, 35. Be dressed ready for service. This is the condition that we have to be in right now. Okay, doesn't matter what condition I was a week ago. I'm supposed to repent. I'm supposed to repent. I get on my knees every day and repent. Okay, that's setting myself up. That's setting us up for the Holy Spirit to be able to move. Okay, when you repent, when you live with a repented heart, you set yourself up for the Holy Spirit to manifest manifest himself, not only working in your life, but to use you. Okay, nobody has dishes and pots in your cupboard that are useless. You get rid of them. You give them away. You sell them in a rummage sale, okay? We're to be pots and vessels to be used by God. It doesn't matter where we're at in our age. It doesn't matter where we're at in position in life. We're to be used right now. God gives you something to do. You need to respond in that moment, you know? Not think about it, you know? God has given us the tools. He's given us money. He's given us the resources, 
to move when he presents us with a situation. And, and the Holy Spirit is ready to use us. Now, we're living under a tyrannical government right now. We're living under tyrannical government right now. We're living in days where for doing God's work, we can get in trouble. We can go to jail. We could lose stuff. We could be sued. So right now, we're going to have to make moves and decisions that will counter, that will counter the work of the adversary. Okay? Look what he says. He says, be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning. We were just talking about the ten virgins. Keep your lamps burning like a man waiting for their master to return. We should be waiting for Christ right now. We should be prepared at a moment's rest. This has been on the news constantly every day. These people here, they're constantly on the news. These people here, we're going to go to Ezekiel 38, but I want to give you some scripture right now, prophetic scripture in the book of Jeremiah that tells us something, some big events are going to take place, okay? In the book of Amos, in chapter 6, it says that they lounged on their sofas comfortably whining and eating. And God calls them his people, his church. We've become in America complacent and thinking that we're just going to keep on and going on and we're going to retire. Some of us already retired. I don't, I don't feel I'll get there where I'm at, okay? But remember what I said last time, eternal eyes. Set your eyes on eternity, okay? Set your eyes on the first thousand years of the millennium. Set your eyes on that because this world is going to pass, okay? So he says right here, be dressed and ready for, for the master to return from the wedding banquet. These verses, we've read them in church over and over again, but now they play key. We've heard them Sunday after Sunday, but now every word in God's word that we read, we should be looking at. Where is this being fulfilled? How is this being fulfilled? Or when will it be fulfilled? Because I'm the last generation, and I'm the one that's going to witness all this. Okay? It says, for, for, for the master to return from a wedding banquet so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth. He will dress himself and serve them and recline at their table, will come and wait on them. Okay. If we're that generation, then what we're waiting for is the return of Jesus Christ. He came 2,000 years ago. We're waiting again. Okay? We're watching prophecy but fulfill right in front of our eyes. Think about this. Philippians chapter 6 says, we were predestined to be called, right? We were predestined. You were chosen before you were even born. Don't ask me how God did that, but he planned it, predestined it. You were predestined to be the tribulation church before his return. You were predestined to be his final chapter of the church age. He put us in confidence and says, I, those right there, he just, I just read in Malachi, he says, those will be mine when I make up my treasure possession. What's that treasure possession? When he sounds the trumpet and gathers his church. He said, those will be mine. Okay? But what are they doing? They're speaking on his behalf during this time. With the administration that's in office right now, we need to be speaking on the Lord's behalf, on what's right in God's word, what's correct, no matter what, what's correct, okay? Let's go on. Go with me right now. I read Malachi. I read that. Huh? Okay. Thank you. What would I do without you? <laughs> okay. All right. Ezekiel chapter 38. 
as I'm talking tonight, I'm going to tie two things in. Prophecy and what God's church looks like. Holy Spirit. That's the key. Keep that in mind as we talk throughout the whole night. The Holy Spirit is the key. Don't walk without him. Don't walk without him. Don't try to do this without him. Don't, don't, don't make this mistake because this is going to be the hard one. And I heard this this morning from a preacher on the radio. He said, get ready for your loved ones to leave your side. Okay? Get ready to be rejected by family. Okay? Get ready. I'm, I'm in this right now. I'm in this right now. I'm watching my children go in one direction. I invited two of them here. They're not here. I'm watching. For God to give us what we're asking for, we're going to have to do what he's asking. Okay? He's asking us to be his church during the tribulation time. How far do we go? Me and Larry have a different stand on what many people think. Right? Okay? How far are we going? The tribulation door, I'm going to show you tonight that that tribulation door is about to open. That we're just on the other side of it right now. Yep. We're, we're standing in front of the gate. The people that are supposed to fulfill prophecy are in position right now. The Antichrist is on earth full grown right now. He knows who he is. He just has to be filled with Satan. Okay? He knows who he is. He's in power right now. He's doing all the moves right now. He just needs the filling, the fulfillment. Remember, our adversary is going to duplicate the Godhead, the Messiah, and the Holy Spirit. He's going to duplicate it. Okay? So the Antichrist is walking on the earth. He hasn't been filled with Satan's power yet. The Bible says in Revelation that he handed his power over to him. Okay? So that event is coming right now. It's being prepped. Okay? We're watching. Okay? Let's go to Ezekiel 38. Let's start. The word of the Lord came to me. Before I go any further, Ezekiel was given all these prophecies. And he was told to deliver it to the house of Israel. The house of Israel were the ten northern tribes that rebelled against Judah and Benjamin. There was a split. That split had happened over 200 years before Ezekiel writes this letter. Now, you tell me. Okay, I went to my dad one day, and I asked him this question. My, my, my little brother's sitting back there. He knows how my dad was. He would right away shut you up, you know? And I went to him. I go, you know, it's interesting that this guy wrote this letter, but he never got to deliver it because he was, he was from Judah. He was a slave in Babylon, and God tells him, write this letter for the house of Israel. The house of Israel had gone into captivity 115 years earlier in the book of Isaiah, and they had lost track of each other. So he writes this letter. Isn't this interesting? God tells him, write a letter and deliver it. He tells Daniel, go about your business because this is for the latter days, what I gave you. So this book comes into fulfillment right now. So you got to ask yourself, where are these people? Who are they? And who are these enemies that are coming against us? Okay? And look, it says, the word of the Lord came to me, son of man, set your face against Gog. Gog is a leader, a king of the land of Magog. Now, I did my research. I've spent 12 years doing this research because I asked the question. They couldn't answer it for me in the church. They kept giving me different responses of different theologians that had wrote different things about this. But I said, who is this house of Israel? Where are they at? Who is God speaking to? Because this is really important to me, and I need to know. So I started, my wife will tell you, I started opening history books. I started doing migration patterns. I started tracing back in time. I started looking at what did Caesar, Julius Caesar write? What did he mean when he said this? What did this guy mean? And right here, we've been taught certain things in the church, but let me tell you, this word right here, Magog was the grandson of Noah. Okay? 
Magog was a grandson of Noah that trespassed against Noah. So when they got off, when they, when they got off the, the ark and they started having these children and this child was born, this guy decided, I got to go make my own land. I got to go make my own moves. And he left. He left. Asia. He wound up here in the center of Asia, which is Mongolia. Okay? Now, I did this. All the Oriental people come from a Mangaloid bloodline. The word Mangaloid comes from Magog. Magog is the father of the Mangaloid bloodline. Bloodline means a lot in the Word of God when God's talking about people. Okay? This guy here fathered the Chinese, all the Orientals, minus North Korea and Japan. They come from another bloodline. They come from the bloodline of Gomer. And Gomer is inside Ezekiel 38. Okay? Now, I found out two things about Gomer. There's a city in Turkey, an ancient city that was named Gomer. But there was also another grandson that went as far as he can go. Okay? So when we're looking at Ezekiel 38, and he names these, he names like seven nations and then others with them. We have to look at where these people are at, who they are, and why, how did they come into an alliance at this point. So Magog, I came to this, I told Larry that I was going to show him something tonight. I came to this conclusion because of what Putin said this week. What he's doing and what he said and the two cities that he's representing, I've come to the conclusion that Putin is the prince of Meshach and Tubal that is written in Ezekiel 38. Look what he says right here. He says, set your face against Gog, the land of Magog. Then he says, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal prophesy against him and say, so this guy here and this guy here are working together. This guy here, Gog, here's the word Gog right here, isn't it? Part of that name, Magog. The main people that came from the Mangaloid bloodline is China. And from China came all the Indo-Chinese nations, Vietnam, Thailand, Cambodia, you know, all those nations down there came out of China. But these people came from this bloodline. Genghis Khan, you ever guys study at Genghis Khan when we were in school? He tried to conquer the whole world. He was a form of antichrist. Okay, he tried to conquer the whole world just like Hitler did. We've had several spirits of Antichrist through our ages trying to rise up because Satan has been trying to do his move for a long time. He's the master of chaos, violence, and death. And he has reaped this. Every time one of these guys have risen up, they've killed millions of people and committed atrocities against the world, mankind. So, China is now, my, my pen ran dry. China, this is how we, we were supposed to look at God's word and give us all, all the characters and signs. I'm constantly looking at signs of who this person looks like, what it is, and we were supposed to look for this alliance. Where, I thought I shut that off, man. Sh shut my phone off, I thought I did. That's Jeremiah. You might want to go answer him back there, see what's wrong. Um, God gave us prophecies for me and you to follow them. Last time I spoke about Ezekiel 3, Ezekiel 33. We have a command. It's not, you, you either follow that command or you don't do it. Okay? If you don't do it, you're in disobedience of the command of the Lord. Ezekiel 3 and Ezekiel 33 appointed us to be watchmen on the wall to watch and to sound the warning. That's what I'm doing here tonight. That's what I've been doing for 15 years, to sound the warning. The enemy's coming. Danger is approaching. We're supposed to tell our children this and this and this is being fulfilled, 
and we're in danger. You know what danger we're in now? The collapse of the American civilization. We're in danger right now. We're in danger of losing our nation. We're in danger of ceasing to be the superpower of the world that God placed us here to enforce freedom. We're, see, we're, we're, we're very close to seeing that in our time. Okay. We were supposed to look at the evidence of when this nation and this nation and this nation come together. Never in history have they had an alliance. They fought wars against each other. Okay? Today we see that these three, look, let me finish reading here. He says, prophesy against him and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. I will turn you around and put hooks in your jaws and bring you out your whole army, your horses, your horsemen, fully armed, a great horde, a large army, and small shields, all of them brandishing swords. And then he says, Persia, Cush, and Put will be with them. Okay? That's another key that we were supposed to look at. All of the shields and helmets, also Gomer with all his truth, and Beth Targoma from the far north with all his troops, and many nations with you. Beth Targoma. Turkey. Turkey is part of NATO. Turkey is the second largest army in NATO. Turkey is opposing us left and right. Turkey is a Muslim nation. Think about that. It's a Muslim nation inside of NATO. Okay? We've given them, we have 200 nukes there. The United States has 200 nukes there. Okay? We've given them weaponry like crazy. Okay? We think they're our ally. And this week, Turkey hosted a meeting and invited Russia, China, Iran, and the president of Ukraine, and invited all kinds of others and left the United States out. Left us out to try to work out a peace plan between Ukraine. You know what Putin's response was? Putin's response is he's going to give it to us this week. He's going to do three things. He says he's going to claim victory in Ukraine. He's going to remove that president and install the president that was removed during the protest that started all this. He's in Moscow right now. He says he's going to claim an alliance between Belarus, Ukraine, Russia, claim it the Russian Federation Empire, and he's changing his title. He already placed, placed a new prime minister yesterday. To, he's the prime minister. He replaced himself, put a new prime minister, and by the end of the week, he's claiming to be called the ruler of the Russian Empire. He's going to pull out his wild card. We're expecting it. And he's going to shut all the gas off to Europe. And he's going to quit selling his gas abroad only on, among his allies. And it's telling us that he's going to throw a barrel of oil from $100 to $400. And crash our economy. Crash the world economy. He's going to pull his wild card. This guy is the prince of Meshach that God was telling us about. Okay? This guy here is in alliance with this guy. We have to look. Who's, who's been walking up and down their hallways together? Xi from China and Putin. Two superpowers coming together to defeat the United States. Now, if we're watching this, what kind of people should we be? Hmm? We should be outspoken warriors right now. We should be letting people. I let, I, let I let family members know this week. We're pretty much on different sides. Okay? When God calls the trumpet to arms, to, and, and I mean, what I mean by arms, some of us will have to fight. Some of us will. Some of us will fight in the spirit. And we'll move in the Holy Spirit, and God will do manifestations during this time. Now, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, don't be afraid that they draw you before leaders on my behalf. 
He says, I will give you words that they won't be able to argue with. Right. Now, this is where courage comes in. Okay? I, I spoke about this last time. Those that choose to save their lives shall lose them. And those that choose to lose their lives shall save them. That's why I was saying last time, I had to ask the Lord to give me eternal eyes because my courage only goes so far. Okay? You tell me you're going to take my house, my car, my livelihood, take everything away from me. That puts me in a bad position. Hmm? Hmm? That puts What happened? She tells me that all the time. No coward shall enter the kingdom of God. So God expects us to be brave and courageous. What did Joshua say to the Israelites? Be brave and courageous. What were they staring at? What were they staring at? Real giants. They were standing at, staring at men that were eight foot tall, nine feet, nine feet tall. Okay. We haven't seen that yet. I believe in the tribulation we're going to see a lot of things. Okay, we're going to see a lot of things. A1, who's heard of A1? Artificial intelligence. The things they're doing. I, okay, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, hey, that's why I need you, bro. <laughs> AI. You know what that is? You know what that is? It's what they were doing before the days of Noah. Yeah, Angels cool. were dabbling with God's creation. Yep, at the Tower of Babel. Things were happening that were not meant to happen, that we were not meant to know. And Elon Musk himself said, what if we lose control of this? They tested one in Japan, and he said he was more intelligent did a human being, and acted like he had feelings. Yeah. He said, I'm afraid that you're going to turn me off. You know, that's death to me if you turn me <laughs> off. Do you know how scary that is that the machine that you created is already fearing that you turn them off? And it's more powerful than you already? And could control every gadget we got and, and do whatever they want? The manifestation of satanic power is going on in the earth. They're dabbling with it. And it's like the demon spirits, of, the spirit of the fallen Nephilim are trying to come back up. Now, not, there's a lot of key things happening. And, 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 and I'll I tell you what, in Hosea it says, in Hosea it says, they shall make my prophets... My people look like lunatics in my house. So right now, people like me are speaking, and others are saying, that dude's off the rocker. You know, I'm fulfilling prophecy. They're fulfilling prophecy. Because Jesus said in, in, in Matthew 23, when he was confronting the Sadducees, he told them, I'm going to send you prophets, teachers, and, 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 and my people. He goes, I'm going to send you my people to speak to you, and you're going to throw them out of the synagogues. You're going to beat them. You're going to get rid of them. The synagogue today is the church. Okay? And there are several of us right now speaking, and the church doesn't want to move. Why? Theology. For a long time, they learned something. Okay? And they kept to it. Didn't want to learn nothing new. Didn't want to hear from God and the Holy Spirit. Okay? They didn't want to hear from the Holy Spirit. They wanted to hear by the, you know, go. I went to my dad one day. When, when, I, when I first came to say I was on fire, my brother, we were on fire. Go to my dad. I said, Dad, I want to be a preacher like you. And he nods and says, sure you do, you know. And I tell him, I want to go to the Northern Baptist Seminary where you went. And he turned around and got real serious. He goes, don't do that. He goes, they'll, they'll, they'll squash whatever you believe. Yep. He says, I went there because the church required me to get the paperwork. He goes, but they didn't believe in the Holy Spirit. They didn't believe in the deity of Jesus. They didn't believe in none of that. They were paid professors. He goes, they will ruin you. You're on fire right now. 
You know, that, that's where I learned this. My dad told me, study God's word and ask for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Those two things. Amen. The Holy Spirit will teach you his word and give you revelation. Yeah. Okay? He goes, that's all you need. And you won't get ruined. Okay? All right, let's go on. It says right here, get ready. When you see this alliance, you're supposed to be getting ready. How? Well, me and brother were just talking. You know, he said he was a prepper. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm a prepper. I haven't been prepping much because I've gone as far as the dollar out of my pocket could go. You know, <laughs> you know I can't go no further, and, and, and I can't carry all that. So what, what kicks in now? Faith. Huh? Yeah, faith. Faith right now that whatever, there's a verse in the Bible in Isaiah that says, you shall enjoy the fruit of your labor. The preparations you made, whatever they were. Remember this. If we're the church, if we're the remnant, the remnant has to help each other during that time. Amen. Okay? I'm expecting that if I got to run out of my house, I'm going to come knock on one of your houses. Yes. Okay? And that's where we're going to do the works of God. You're going to open the door and let me in and give me a cheeseburger, okay? <laughs> we're going to take care of each other like the book of Acts, like they did in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, this guy rose up, Nero. He was the most wicked of Caesars. He ate his own mother. He kicked his mother to death and he ate her, Okay? He went against the church like you wouldn't believe. He did horrible things to the Christians in the book of Acts. The Antichrist will be ten times worse than this guy. He already has planned for the church. So the church is going to have to come together to survive that time, okay, to help each other during that time, just like they did in Germany. Whoever saw the movie Hidden, Hidden, uh, Hidden Place by Terry Tim Boone, Okay? The hiding, the hiding place. Thank you. I need you, baby. <laughs> the hiding place. I saw that movie when I was real young, and it played a big game in my head, and I lived that way. I prepared myself that way, that we will be able to survive, help others, help each other, work like T uh, Corey Tim Boone did. She did a work, a manifestation of the Lord during a time of rise of a type of antichrist. Okay, let's go on. I'm on verse 7. Get ready, be prepared, you and all the hordes gathered about you. Russia does not have a choice in this matter. Okay? God is controlling this. God says he put hooks in his jaws and drew them out to battle. Putin has been drawn out to battle. He's been putting in situations where he has to make his move. There were several situations that made him make his move. Okay? Main thing about Russia is that 70 years ago, now maybe 80 or more, a man came to power named Stalin. He burned all the churches down. He burned the Bibles. He turned Russia into an atheist nation. In Psalms, God says, the fool saith there is no God. So God is against an atheist nation. Okay? China followed suit. China did worse. Stalin killed 25 to 50 million of his own people. He massacred the Ukrainians, by the way. Mao in China, he did worse. He killed 75 million of his own people to reach where, he, where they're at right now. This is what communism does. What you're, uh, if you're a Democratic in here, forgive me, but I'm going to tell the truth. This is what the Democrats are asking for, socialism. This is what they're setting us up for. So the ingredients of socialism... Any Cuban will tell you, anybody in Venezuela will tell you, anybody in China will tell you that the ingredients of socialism is to massacre the masses to develop what they want. And the United States is in great danger right now. And we got people in our leadership. I, I said it to my wife, how did these people get there? How did they get the positions that they have right now? to be able to do what they're doing. Huh? I want to read one verse before we keep going. Ezekiel 28. I teach this verse at bad. I'm militant. 
I'm militant-minded because of this verse. Another verse in Psalm, God says, I am the, the, the psalmist says, I am the sword of your judgment to be used by you. Right here in Ezekiel 28, in the middle when God's speaking to Satan directly, he says, therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says, because you think you are wise and as wise as a God. He's talking to Satan. He says, I am going to bring foreigners against you, the most ruthless of the nations. They will draw their swords against your beauty and wisdom and pierce your shining splendor. When the Antichrist arrives, we should know enough. I do. You should know enough. So you can tell your children, that's the Antichrist. That's the one we've been talking about. He's here, and I oppose him, and I resist him at all full strength until the Lord comes get me. So until the rapture happens, we're to point that man out. She said it a few minutes ago in Revelation. It says, the coward, the person that doesn't point him out, the person that, re, you know, that submits to him is a coward. Can't enter the kingdom of God. So I'm to point him out, say, that's the one. That's the one that, that the Bible announced. And we're watching. There's a, there's a stroke. People are saying this is the guy. People are saying Chi. How do you, how do you spell his name? Chi. C-H. Chi. I, 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 I have, because, because our administration, because I have, I have this in my head. I'm watching. I'm watching. Chi has a lot of power, a lot of influence, and a lot of Americans are already following him. Biden is already doing business with him. You know, our leaders are already in bed with him, okay? And what's happened in a lot of empires, and this is what you, and, 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 and I was at a mega church, and they called me a conspiracy theorist when I would say these things. But I told them, an empire falls from within, from people that betray their own people. We're seeing treason. Treason is happening at a maximum level in the superpower of the world. Money. I just read, I just read about what they found in um, Hunter's laptop. laptop. 31 meetings in China. 31 meetings in a span of two years. Every meeting ended with a meeting with Biden at the naval base. Every meeting, he went to China. Supposedly, the dude's a drug head, right? But he flies to, he's intelligent enough, he's connected enough to sit down with world leaders and come back and bring his dad the message and get his agreement from his dad to go back. Something sinister is going on in America. Something very sinister is going on. And we have to oppose it. We have to speak against it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, this guy here. Okay, this guy here. He more powerful than this guy. A lot more powerful. He can put a 200 million man army on the earth. He's the only country that could put a 200 million man army on the earth. Besides India. Okay? Guess what? India was at the meeting with BRICS the other day. Okay? We're depending... The Bible says in that day Israel shall go to, to, to Syria for help. And in that day Judah shall go to Egypt. Speaking of those living in the land. Who is Israel making an alliance with right now? Saudi, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, the, the Emirates, yep. Egypt, they're all, they're, they're all of Esau's children. Many. Yep. Many. Many. There's many. Yep. All of Esau's children, all of Lot's children. You know, Lot was not included. You know, his children, his children rebelled. Lot's children rebelled. Lot's daughters rebelled, okay, against the Lord. So we got Lot's children. Lot's children are mentioned in Psalm 83 coming against Israel, okay? So we got all these groups meeting, talking, never 
in the history of mankind have all these nations been friends, allies. Iran. Persia is Iran. Biden said this week he stands with Israel and won't allow a nuke to be built. They already got the nuke. They already got it. Come on. Hey, I got a 12th grade mentality, and I can see, man, what are they telling me? It's already happened. It's already done. It's a done deal. America's being sold. This is what we should be prepared for. Walking in our country under the bondage of another being God's people. The remnant has to speak. The remnant has to preach during that time. You know what? For years, for years, I've been to a lot of churches. I'm a, I'm a keyboardist. I've done a lot of work in, in several churches, big churches. I've, I've, and they always preached about a great revival. You've heard it, a great revival. The problem is I believe in that great revival. I don't believe what they believe they've been teaching me. That great revival is going to happen during a day of trouble, during a time of misery. God says in Hosea, I shall go back to my throne and sit there and wait till you seek me in your misery. Because we wouldn't seek him on the right time, the right way. Okay? That doesn't speak of all of us. You're here tonight, okay? You're here tonight to hear God's word, okay? So there's a remnant on the earth. The remnant has to operate separate from the church establishment, okay? That what I read in Malachi, God said, in that day you shall know which one are mine. You shall be able to distinguish. He calls them the wicked and the righteous, Okay? That's why people like me are hated. Hated. I've been told things are unbelievable inside the church. Okay? But they can't dispute because I'm explaining it to, to you. I'm breaking it down here. Look, let's go on. We're going to get through chapter 38 today. <laughs> okay? okay. Look what it says right here. This is the scary part. Uh, Where did I leave off? Verse 8. Okay, verse 9. You and all your troops and the many nations with you will will go up, advance like a storm. That's a key word. You got to look at Scripture and look at little key words. He says it's going to come like a storm. How does a storm develop around here? All of a sudden we see black clouds and boom. We got thunderstorm. We got tornadoes ripping through. It it doesn't give us a 48-hour notice. He says, you're going to come like a storm. You will be like a cloud covering the land. The cloud scares me. The cloud. I heard two days ago, two days ago, when Biden went to Saudi Arabia, they were talking to this cleric in, in Saudi Arabia, this religious Muslim cleric. And he said, they asked him, what do you think? About Biden coming here, you see how he met, uh, that kills me. They did a fist, fist clap when he got off the plane. Here's a, a wicked prince that's going to be king that killed that Khashoggi guy, chopped him up in little pieces, you know, whatever. I mean, he, he, did, he did an atrocity, and Biden gets off in. A Muslim nation that hates us, okay? Now, and he said it. Because the strategic partnership is important. We're relying on Islam to help us fight Russia. Now, I grew up in the streets. I wouldn't rely on somebody that I knew didn't like me to be my partner in a fight down the street. (laughs) You know, know, I wasn't going to go down the street with this guy knowing that he might help the other guy. You know, (laughs) right, right, you know, you're better off going alone, (laughs) you know. Okay, now, 
Saudi Arabia, we cannot be in an alliance. A Christian nation cannot be in an alliance with Saudi Arabia. Okay, we can't. Yet we're making these alliances. Rather, God, God gets very angry. He mentions in his words several times, you went to Egypt rather than relying on me. You went to your enemy rather than calling on my name. America delivered us in World War II. America delivered us in World War I. America has, uh, I mean God. God has delivered us in all these wars. God has delivered us. Why? Because there was a strong presence of the Holy Spirit working through the churches across America. Yes, we had people, we had, we had alcoholics, we had everything here all the time. But it wasn't at the maximum like it is now. Okay? It wasn't where we are now. Okay? We were a major Christian nation. So was Australia. So was Canada. So was New Zealand. So was Great Britain. And look at where we're at now. We've turned away from God. Now, I've been sounding the trumpet over and over, and it escalated over the last election that we needed to tell. I, I've been telling my children. I've been telling my children and my grandchildren, you need to stop what you're doing and turn back around. You need to quit being immoral. You need to quit adding to the immorality of America. Okay? I'm against that. And I, as a father, I had one kid tell me the other day, I said, why didn't you come call me on Father's Day? Why didn't you come see me on Memorial Day? He goes, because, man, you're just going to talk to me about God. You're just going to confront my lifestyle. You know? And I told him, I love you. I don't want you to perish. I don't want you to go to hell. I'd rather you hate me right now. I'd rather you hate me and, receive, and remember my word that I spoke to you when you're in the tribulation, when you're a slave. We don't talk about that in the church. Over 29 times the word captivity is mentioned in the Old Testament. What do you think God's going to do? He's going to send Americans into slavery. He's going to send the Jews into slavery. He's going to send nations into slavery so they could what? Turn back to him. Because it's the only thing that works. He's done it over and over again. People hear me say this and they get mad at me. They go, they ain't no more slaves. I go, they are slaves already. We are. Uh, yeah, we're already enslaved with that credit card. <laughs> I mean, they already got us, you know? Okay. Yep, they're slaves in Africa. They're slaves in, in, in the Middle East. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. I see slaves in my yard coming from down South America. I see the bondage that they're in. They're getting here. Don't speak English. And, and yeah, they're getting here. They're working where I work at. And I notice the relationship between their bosses. You know, they're like servants. They can't go nowhere. They can't do none unless this guy says they could. You know, I had one guy tell me he pays for my housing. He gives me my paycheck. He pays for everything. And I can't leave the yard. I can't go nowhere. You know, I asked him to do me a favor today. And he told me, el patron. I got to ask el patron. And I go, he got him over here. And he's got him in bondage, you know? So slavery is going on. It's right in front of our face. Human trafficking is going on right now. Big time, big time, okay? All right. This is what, verse 10, this is what the sovereign Lord says. On that day, when God says something like this, on that day, thoughts will enter your mind, and you will devise an evil scheme. You will say, I will invade a land of unwalled villages. I will attack a peaceful and unsuspecting people. The leaders that are devising this plan, God's sitting on his throne, and God says he looks down, and he says there's an evil scheme on earth. It's wicked. It's going to kill one-third of the world population when they um, uh, open up their scheme. This war, this war right here, the Ezekiel 38 war, the Gog war, when this war happens, it's going to be fast, quick. It ain't going to last but a couple of months, and it's going to take seven months to bury the dead. It says it right here. He gives us all the notations of what we need to know. That's a seal in Revelation, one-third or one-fourth. Which, which seal opens first? The, the one-fourth, right? The one-fourth kills the one-fourth of the world population. Yep. 
One-fourth of the world population, that's the opening of the tribulation. That sets up the Antichrist to come to power. That sets up the one world order. They got to rearrange the whole world. Imagine the chaos. Nukes being dropped in Russia, in China, in the United States. The devastation from them nukes. We're talking about it. New York just gave a video yeah. of what to do if a nuke explodes in New York. Then Gary did it. I, I got somebody mad. I said, he got to drop a million dollar nuke of Gary. <laughs> I got somebody mad. They got really, I mean, a pastor got really mad. He goes, why would you say? I go, I'm just saying, dude, they're not going to waste a million dollar nuke of Gary. I mean, they're going to drop it in Chicago, you know? I go, but that doesn't matter because we're all going to be devastated. Okay? That knocks us. Okay, let's go on. God is speaking here. He says this, an unsuspecting people, all of them living without walls, without gates and bars. I will, and this is what this leader is saying, I will plunder and loot and churn my hand against the resettled ruins. And the people gathered from the nations. That's another country. What is America? People gathered from other nations, unwalled cities. We live in peace. We don't expect an invasion. We don't expect nobody to come here. You know, we're an unsuspecting people. Israel is sitting over there in the same position. America's going to come help me. Biden said, we got you. Big betrayal. The Bible speaks of a great betrayal against Judah. A great betrayal. Okay? Look what it says right here. Uh, to the resettled ruins and people gathered from the nations, rich in livestock goods, living at the center of the land, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish and all villages will say to you, have you come to plunder? Have you gathered your hordes to loot, to carry off silver and gold and to take away livestock goods and seize much plunder? Let me tell you something. We've been in this NATO alliance for a long time. The Europeans are well known, well known for betrayal. The Pope is well known for betrayal. We're relying on our NATO alliance to come to us in our time of need. But the Bible is describing a great betrayal. In Jeremiah, God says, in that day, your allies shall care nothing for you. And we're watching our allies in Europe speaking to Putin, speaking to China, making deals, going against us. I'm sorry, but Trump was right. He was correct in the direction he was taking us. He was pointing them out. He was saying, these guys are not in bed with us. He had the right attitude. Make America strong to stand by itself. If America were to turn back to God, and this is, this is where we fail as a church, where we're failing as a church. Down the street, we got youths doing whatever. Whatever. They're killing each other for $10. Stealing their cars, carjacking. It's time for us to go out there and start confronting these little guys. And telling them, what you're doing is going to take you to hell. I tell my grandson, what you're doing is going to take you to hell. Is you're not going to live out your life. You're going to die young. And you're going to go to hell. We've allowed America to escape us. We've allowed immorality. Now, two weeks ago, they overturned Roe versus Wade. Two or three weeks ago, right? You see the uproar in our nation? Why did we get there? Why did we get there that they couldn't understand that that immorality was going to destroy us? Okay? So look at where we're at. It's very dark in America right now. Very dark. And we have the light. We have the light. I'm trying to light a fire in all of us so that we don't continue down the track we're continuing. Uncomfortable things are happening to us right now, and that's the moment that I can share the gospel. There's a guy walking around the hallway chasing his little baby. He's my friend. He's Egyptian. He's my friend. We became brothers in Christ when, in bad ministry. He showed up at my house. 
You know, all my friends tripped out and said, dude's Egyptian. (laughs) (laughs) Where do you come from? And I said, he's a Coptic Christian. He'll tell you about the persecution of the Coptic Christian, of his family in Egypt. Okay? But he sat in the truck with me. We were training and this and that. And all we did was talk about the Lord. All we did was talk about what was going on in Egypt, what's going on here, where I came from, from Puerto Rico, what the gospel did there. And, and we realized this is what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be sharing the word of God right now. We're supposed to be talking about it. We're supposed to be telling the people that don't. When, 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 when I had a, a guy the other day tell me, man, that's tr- terrible what happened with Roe versus Wade. You Christians are messed up. He says, you're whacked out. He goes, you're dangerous. And I turned him, I told him, I go, yes, we are. Yes, we are. We make our stand. You're murdering babies. We're not backing that up. Okay? Your words are going to cast you in hell. Oh, there's no hell. There's no God. You guys are gone. We're going to find out. We're about to find out. Yep. We're about to find out. And I told, and, and you know what? I, I wanted a, the friendship of an atheist many years ago. I remember me and my wife were dumping at Plantoon Island, and when we go in there, she would always share the gospel. And she dumped her load, and I came in there one day and sat down, and the guy goes, your wife is always talking about this God. I'm, I, he goes, could I tell you the truth? I'm an atheist. I go, okay, that's cool. You're an atheist. I go, I'm going to be coming here every day. I go, you can share with me because you're free to share. Can I share with you and try to prove you wrong? And we became friends. And every time I'd come in there, sit down, he would look at me and say, okay, tell me something. And I would point to the Bible, point to prophecies being fulfilled. See, prophecy was meant to save souls. That's why so many in the churches try to stop it. And they don't understand they're doing the enemy's work. When you speak prophecy and they see it coming true, like right now, I'm winning people like crazy with this. Friends of mine that work with me, people, they're all realizing this is happening. This is being fulfilled. All this is being fulfilled. In a mega church, they used to call me the doomsday preacher. And I told them, this is going to get people saved. Yep. Yep. This is going to save people because what does the Bible say? This, this lady told me, you're scaring everybody. I go, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all understanding. If you don't fear God, what did I read to you in Malachi? Those that feared the Lord, God heard them. God is to be feared. God is to be feared. A reverent fear of God will give you revelation and understanding of God's work. Okay. So I was teaching this for a long, I've been teaching this for years. And that lady told me, man, you, get, you make me scared. I go, good, good, because you should be scared of sinning and losing your soul. You should be scared of this coming and killing your children without knowing God. Okay, that should scare you to make you tell somebody about God. I kept sharing with this atheist and sharing with him and sharing with him, and we became friends. I was honest with him, okay? I was straightforward with him, okay? And I was sharing with him and talking to him about our politics, about this, about supporting a boy, all this. We became friends. He's on my Facebook page, and every once in a while, he did it this week. He doesn't say nothing on Facebook. Every once in a while, he'll let me know he's there, you know? He'll let me know he's there. The other day, he sent me a private message. He said, Thank you for being sincere with me and not being afraid to tell me about your God. Okay? He goes, it's messed with my mind because my dad was atheist, my mom was atheist, my grandmother was atheist, and here you go. You just told me things. And he goes, I'm watching all this happening, and it's scary as heck. And I told him, stay with me. Walk with me. Okay? Somewhere in the storm... We're going to meet, and I'll be able to share more of the love of Christ with him, okay? I'll be able to help him, maybe even feed him. You understand? Okay? We're going we're gonna to have that revival they've been telling us about. But we may be barefooted, dirty, sharing that last 
two boxes of Raymond noodles, you know, or Oreo cookies, that's even better. <laughs> you can live on Oreo cookies. <laughs> I did. I smashed the box the other day in the truck. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go on. Therefore, son of man, look what he tells us. He tells Ezekiel, Ezekiel says the message to us. He says, therefore, prophesy and say to God. We're supposed to be speaking right now. We're supposed to be speaking against Russia right now. We're supposed to be speaking against China right now. It says right now, and say to God, this is what the sovereign Lord says. In that day, when, you, when my people Israel are living in safety, will you not notice it? You will come from the place in the far north, you and many nations with you. All of them riding on horses, a great horde, a mighty army. You will advance against my people Israel like a cloud that covers the land. That cloud will be nuclear. How many times have they been talking since the Ukrainian war started about going nuclear? The discussion is going on in Russia about using nukes. That's why the United States is moving troops and moving stuff, because this guy is talking about using nukes. He's getting desperate in Ukraine, and this man is going to use a nuke, okay? He may use a number of them. The Bible says that the land is covered with a cloud. He says it twice in this chapter. He says, uh, where, where am I at? 16, you will advance against my people Israel like a cloud that covers the land in days to come. So he was talking about the last days, the latter days. O Gog. I will bring you against my land so the nations may know me when I show myself holy through before their eyes. You know how they're going to, how we're going to know God's holy? He wrote it right here. He wrote all this war right here thousands of years ago. And we're going to watch it fulfilled. And right now, we've been preaching it. They're talking about us in the news. They say these conspiracy theorists preaching this stuff in Ezekiel. I heard it this week, you know. They're preaching this stuff, and they got everybody in an uproar. We're going to work this out with Russia. We're going to work this out with China. We're gonna, it's going to be a better world. We're more intelligent now. Nobody's going to use a nuke. I heard that on TV today, this week, from, from a supposedly sophisticated journalist, you know. He says, these Christians are freaking people out. Well, guess what? When it gets fulfilled, they're going to say, those Christians do what they were talking about. Yep. And people are going to come to the Lord. People are going to come to the Lord because of fulfillment of what we told them was what's going to happen. Okay? We spelled this wrong, but this ain't chi, man. Chi is, yeah. We've been watching it on, we, uh, what? It's starting with a C. Oh, it starts with a, with an X, X-I. Yeah, X-I. There you go. There you go. Well, I'm not Chinese, okay? <laughs> chi a pet. Okay, it's chi. All right. I'm not Chinese. Could I share something with you deep? I'm going to share something with you deep right now. And then we're going to go back to this. A couple years ago, the Lord gave me about seven dreams. Seven dreams, consecutive seven dreams. I consider them seven visions. My mom taught me that when you have a dream sometimes and you remember the whole dream, that it could be a vision from the Lord. Okay, I've had a lot of stupid dreams, okay? But these seven, I remembered them. And I told them to people in bad. I've repeated them to people. Three of those dreams, I told my wife, three of those dreams, I saw myself unloaded from an airplane with a suitcase, me, her, and my grandson, led off an airplane and led through an empty city into a building and locked into an apartment by the Chinese, okay? In that dream... I spoke their language in the dream. I spoke Chinese, okay? I spoke their language, and I remember the dream vividly, and it was the city was empty, completely empty, skyscrapers empty. And that was years ago, and now I realize that China has 10 cities that are completely empty with skyscrapers. What are they doing? What are they waiting for? They're waiting for their slave workers and the Christians that they're going to take there, Okay? Now, I'm going to share another testimony, which is really deep. The first dream I had, 
I was getting on an airplane in short pants, no shoes, no shirt, in Cuba. I arrived at the beach. I got off the airplane. My daughter met me at the bottom of the stairs of the airplane, and she was crying, my oldest daughter. And I told her, where are my grandchildren? Where's your sister? And she said, Dad, they died in the fire. They died in the war. We were forced here. Okay? So I get off the airplane. I'm, I'm, I'm in shock when I'm here. I see all these little American children running around on the beach playing, big wheels, just running around on the beach. And I go, what's this? She goes, these are the children that they brought here after their parents were killed. And I was like, wow. Right away, this man walked up to me, and he grabbed me. And he goes, you're the one we've been waiting for. You're the pastor that's supposed to minister to us. He goes, let me take you to the churches. They're hidden in the jungle. And he took me away. He took me running through the jungle, and he goes, hurry, hurry. The churches are waiting. I woke up from the dream. I'm not going to tell you the rest of it because the rest of it is very personal to me. I woke up from the dream. I told it over and over again, okay? A year ago, I asked the Lord. I go, I know you gave me these dreams. I know what they mean. I'm afraid. I don't want to go. I said, I don't want to do it. I told Larry. I, said, I, I told my wife. I said, send somebody else. I don't want to go to no communist nation. They don't need to hear me. In the dreams, I had dream in Korea, dream in China, dream in there, dream in Siberia. I said, I don't speak the language. What, 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 what would I do there? You know? Okay? It scared me. Jonah? Huh? Jonah. <laughs> I was Jonah. I've been Jonah many times. Okay? Now, a year ago, I get this crazy friend request. Spanish dude, Cuban guy, pastor. I accept the friend request. He's speaking none of his Spanish. He's sending me images of churches that I see down there, like in Puerto Rico. And I tell my wife, I go, how'd this dude, how'd this dude send me this friend request? I think he's in Cuba. And what he's doing is illegal. He's having a church in, in a little house, a hidden, you know, and they, he would send me the services every Sunday. And it was this little house and 30, 40 people packed in this hot little house you know, paint peeling off the walls. You know, I said, man, that's a real church. And they're praising God, falling on their knees, man. I mean, the spirit's just moving in every service. So one day I told the dude, you know, we're going back and forth in Spanish. I tell the guy, are you really in Cuba? And he goes, yes, I am. He goes, we have gotten a, a system of limited internet. And uh, somebody, I don't know how, sent me something about you, and I sent a friend request, and you accepted it, and here we are. And he goes, I have something to tell you. The Lord told me we were going to meet personally. Oh. And I said, okay. I'm not interested, but okay. <laughs> All right? Okay? I, you know, I didn't tell him that, okay? I've continued my friendship. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now... Time went by, and he's, I, I've gotten into tr different troubles, and I express it for people to pray for me on Facebook. And, and one day I expressed a great problem, and uh, he contacted me on private messenger, and he says, listen, the Lord spoke to me about you last night. He goes, he goes I'm to pray for you. I'm to continue. And he gave me a word of encouragement, so powerful, you know, and he told me, the Lord's going to use you. The Lord's going to be with you. The Lord's going to walk with you. You're gonna, and, and this is what killed me. He goes, and you're going to be obedient, and you're going to go where God sends you. And you're not going to keep saying you don't want to go. He told me in Spanish. And I'm thinking to myself, come on, man. This guy says, he, how does he, he ain't in my mind. <laughs> you know, that is so the Holy Spirit. Now, I realize that he has the Holy Spirit. I've told my wife, I, go, I see the Holy Spirit working in that church. I heard this man has got to have courage in a communist nation, openly baptizing people and doing whatever. And he told me, he goes, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm, he goes, the minute they want to crash down on me, I'm dead. They're leaving me alone right now. He goes, Raul Castro is being a little bit lenient, you know? So. I got challenged. I need to share this testimony. I got challenged about two months ago. 
he sent me a crazy message. He goes, hey, I'm moving two young pastors. We got them out the country. I need your help. He goes, I need you. He goes, the Lord put you in my heart and said that you would help me move these people through South America, Central America, to their safe to do their work for the Lord. I went to my wife and I said, this is a challenge. What I'm doing is not politically correct. Okay? But if the Holy Spirit used this man to contact me to do what God's work, I'm going to do it. And I did. I worked with them. We worked together. Those two pastors are in America right now. It took us two months. It was really bad. It was really bad. The people that I had to engage with to move these people, I said, wow, this is what's going on in Central and Latin America. This is what's going on right south of our border. Anyways, the other day he sent me a text. Thank you for being obedient to the Lord. And he gave me a report. He goes, thank you. He goes, now, when will you be in Cuba? (laughs) And I laughed. We were FaceTiming. So he was looking at me, and I laughed. And he goes, no, seriously, you have a family in Christ here waiting for you. And when you get here, I will move you through Cuba, and I will assist you. And the Lord's already making the preparations for your arrival. And I go, really? (laughs) I go, go, really? Okay. All right. Okay. When, When God called Isaiah... And he told Isaiah, whom shall I send? What did Isaiah say? Send me. And I've been saying that even though I don't know how and I'm not in agreement. Jonah was not in agreement. Okay? A lot of these guys were not in agreement. So I'm not, I'm being honest. I'm not in agreement. Why does it got to be that way? Why does it got to work that way? Well, I hope it's quick and fast. Okay? Okay? I've shared the other faces that I've seen in that vision with my friends, my brothers in Christ. They don't like that. (laughs) I told them, you're with me on the train in Siberia. (laughs) You know, they're like, why? (laughs) I haven't seen you, Daniel. (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) All right. Okay. The discomfort that's going to come at this time is I'm going through a lot of trouble with my trucking business. I'm going through a lot of trouble with it. And somebody told me the other day, the Lord's preparing your heart for discomfort, you know, making you strong so that you can endure. Now, how many times does it say in Revelation, have patience and endure? If we're not here, we don't need patience and endurance, right? If the church is not here, you don't need patience and endurance, okay? Okay, let's go on. This is verse 17. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Are you not the one I spoke of in former days? By my servants, the prophets of Israel. The guys that wrote this were his prophets. They were to deliver the message and we were to teach it. Okay? We were to teach it. A lot of prophets are rising up in churches right now. A lot of apostles. I've been confronting this, and this is, this is the, the sticking point where some churches pushed me away. You know, I said it. I'll say it. I walked to one church, and I said, too many prophets and apostles and not enough Indians. You guys following these guys and these people just because they jumped up and spit a few words? You know? No, no. I, I, I have a relative that he's appointed his name, Dr. Apostle so-and-so. And his wife is the prophetess so-and-so, you know? And I love him. And he he asked me, he invited me to church so many, many times, and he was on Facebook, and he was doing videos, and this and this and this. And one day he goes, you never come. I invited him tonight. I invited him tonight. But he goes, you never come. I go, first of all, I do not acknowledge your apostleship. I do not see it, and I do not acknowledge it. And I surely don't acknowledge your wife, the prophetess. I go, the Bible says that their word will line up with God's word. That word she's speaking does not line up with God's word. She's babbling, you know, telling you tomorrow, hey, you're going to get a job and you're going to have a lot of money. Well, if you go apply, you're going to get a job. (laughs) Okay. 
Okay, I mean, they say things that if you move and do certain things, it seems like it connects. There was, she's not here today. The lady that was here last time, she spoke about discernment. If you have the Holy Spirit, you got discernment. You look at people and you say, wait a minute, you know, this is a little bit gone here, you know? And Jesus told me, many shall rise in my name in that day. And we got a lot of them. They're speaking on the street corners. They're speaking everywhere. They're saying all kind of crazy stuff. And it's not lining up with this. How are you going to have prosperity with this coming? Huh? Now, I'll tell you what. God chooses on whom he blesses. There's a difference between prosperity teaching and God blessing you. Okay? When you're obedient to God's word, he takes care of us. Okay? My wife told me the, day, the other day, many are the troubles of the righteous men, but God delivers them from him, them all. Okay? So, so, I mean, there's a difference in what they're teaching out there, so we got to watch it. But he says, his prophets will prophesy in them days. At that time, they prophesied for years that I would bring you against them. This is what will happen in that day. When Gog attacks the land of Israel, my hot anger, this is God, my hot anger will be aroused, declares the sovereign Lord. In my seal and fiery wrath, I declare that at that time, there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. And I'll tell you what, what happened this week freaked me out. Yellowstone Park had the humongous flood. There's a volcano there. If, if that thing explodes... We're in darkness. Okay. Now, we just had that great f sudden flood this week. Wiped out houses. I, I mean, I saw this on TV. I said, this is surreal. Okay? Guess what? We have a Russian scientist that escaped. He's in Argentina right now. And he says he's worked on the nuclear program for the past 40 years for Russia. And Russia has a plan to drop nukes on the Mississippi River and on Yellowstone Park. That's why Putin said this week, I only have to drop four nukes. Yep. We got the blueprints and everything of what they're, they're planning. And Putin said it this week, I only have to drop four nukes on the United States and they're done. New York, California, Yellowstone, and the Mississippi River, and we're done. He said it. He's telling us. Come on. The super, a leader or a superpower that has the power to launch is telling us, what he's going to do, okay? What he's going to do. Now, there's a problem. He's right here. God says, in my zeal and fiery wrath, I declare at that time there shall be a great earthquake in the land. The fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the beasts of the field, every creature that moves along the ground, and all the people on the face of the earth will tremble in my presence the mountains will be overturned, the cliffs crumble, and every wall will fall to the ground. This is big. It's worldwide. Okay? Why wouldn't... If God placed this in the Bible for us to preach at the last days, why aren't we preaching it? Hmm? We've been talking about God's love in the church for 1,700 years. We've been going around with, you know, uh, I have several relatives, several people tell, oh, I'm preaching a series for the next eight weeks. I go, series? Okay. A program. Okay, a program gospel. I was raised, and my brother would testify, I was raised by a dad that he would get on his hands and knees and pray, and whatever the Holy Spirit gave him, he spoke. There was no series. I never heard that, you know, that there was a series. He would get, sometimes he'd get up there in his message. He'd, say, he'd close his stuff up and he'd say, wait a minute, God gave me something else. And he changed. He says, I'll give you that another day. You know, I've heard that from other preachers. Okay, I grew up in churches where you'd walk in and the pastor was about to preach and the Holy Spirit would fall and all of a sudden, let's just worship tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Let, People will be falling on the aisles on their knees. I don't see that, that hardly no more. Where, where everybody would be kneeling on the aisles and on the floor, and their, you know, and 
We don't, we're not seeing that no more. And that's where, that's, God enjoys total worship like that, you know, that you fall on your knees spontaneously and wherever, you know, you praise them. My sleeper in my truck just became my holy place. Every morning, the other day, the owner of the yard, he was looking at me for the truck. When I stood up from the sleeper and came to the seat, he was standing there staring at my windshield. He walked up and he goes, what were you doing? I said, I pray, Loopy. I pray every day back there. I go back there and get on my knees and pray before I leave this yard. I pray for my drivers. I pray for my wife. I pray for my kids. I pray for myself, you know? And he goes, wow. He goes, most of my truck drivers and their sleepers have porn, you know? That's where we're at in the country, that that's normal. I'm weird, okay? My bathroom in my house is my holy place too. My basement is my holy place, okay? There are places where I go to pray, okay? And here we are about to enter this time. We're watching all this happen. So I had a preacher told me that war is not supposed to happen to, 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 to the end of the millennium. I go, to the end of the millennium? I go, dude, he's threatening us with nukes right now. How far are we going to go? You know? How far are we going to get before we see this? Next week. Maybe next month. The way I see it, with all this going on, these alliances, the, the treaties that are being made, Biting, promising Israel protection, okay? The alliances that are being made, the treaties that are being made, and we're at this hair, hair. We got ships all over the world cutting through China, and China's saying, don't do that again, you know? Russia sailing up by Alaska and saying, what did Russia say this week? They said it several times. They want Alaska back. Either we hand it back or they're going to take it. They want Alaska back. Okay? Listen to what you're hearing. The things that you're hearing from superpowers in the world. Okay? And the Bible tells us, Ezekiel 38, tells us about this massive war. Now, look what it says he's going to do in verse 21. This is why I think the West is being very quiet. Okay? Well, we know... During the times of the popes, the popes were very devious. They would plot and plan wars. They would plot and plan how to overturn governments, okay? And what I'm watching through this administration, through the European Union, that they're being very quiet, moving soldiers, moving troops, moving things, getting things ready. And the Bible says that God says, look what he says right here. And he even tells us where it comes from. He says, I will summon a sword against Gog on all my mountains, declares the sovereign Lord. Now, I read in one scripture, it says, I will summon a sword from the West. Interesting, isn't it? That I will summon a sword from the West. That's why you got to be careful about your Bibles. This is the NIV, and that part of that scripture has been removed. But I've read it in other versions, and it says a sword from the West. Isn't that leaving a big... This is why... You got to be careful what Bible you're using, okay? I'm using the NIV, and I just realized that. I said, wait a minute. I've read the sword comes from the West. He says he summons, God summons a sword from the West. And this scripture says he summons a sword. He leaves out key that would help me and you understand where it's coming from, right? It's coming from the West. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will execute judgment upon him, plague, bloodshed, I will pour down torrents of rain, hailstorms, burning sulfur. That's the key word. Burning sulfur. Nuclear. Nuclear. Yellowstone Park. Volcanic ash. Okay? On him and on all his troops and the many nations with him. And so I will show my greatness and my holiness and I will make myself known in the sight of many nations. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Let's go down to 39. Because there's some keys here that help us understand more. Son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. 
I am against you, O Gog, chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, Moscow and Tobolsk. Those are two major cities in Russia. That's where this word came from, Meshech. Moscow came from this word, Meshech, okay? And it says right here, it says, Tubal, and I will turn you around and drag you along. I will bring you from the far north and send you against the mountains of Israel. Then I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. On the mountains of Israel, you will fall, you and all your troops and the nations with you. I will give you as food to all the kinds of carrion birds and wild animals, so you will fall in the open field, for I have spoken it, declares the sovereign Lord. But this verse here, after this, scares me. I will send a fire on Magog and on those who live in safety in the coastlands, and they will know I am the Lord. That's a nuclear exchange. Coastlands. That's us. There's an exchange, okay? Revelation says in the fourth seal, a quarter of the world population perished, okay? Perished. Me and you, and I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to read a couple other key verses from somewhere else. Me and you are living in key times. You're the church that's going to see the coming of the Lord. Okay, the Bible says that Jesus said in Matthew's, when you see these things happening, look up that your redemption draws near. Because my redemption is drawing near, it causes me to do what David said. David said, examine my heart and show me what's wrong with me. Okay? Because I have to be ready. I have to be sanctified. I have to be purified during this time. So I can't be sitting there with the sins that I've been carrying quietly because a lot of people in church are carrying sins quietly, you know? Things that they, they hate their brother. They hate their sister. They hate the pastor. They, there's no love, you know? So these are the things that we should be examining ourselves and correcting, sanctifying ourselves, prepared. That's what he means. He says, look up that your redemption draws near. Luke 21 says, pray that you would escape, but the second part of that verse said that you would be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. Remember, God is holy. You can't stand in front of him if you're not holy. So he says, pray you escape, but pray that you're worthy. Okay? So we have to be worthy. So I've, you know what, I've been walking with the Lord so many years and I realized, I told my wife a while back, I said, I lost my love. I don't love nobody. I don't love my enemies. I, I didn't feel the love. I just had become walking in the motions, you know. I had gotten involved in ministry. I was doing ministry, but it became like a routine, you know. And I told my wife, I go, she noticed. She goes, you became this angry, bitter person again, you know. And I didn't realize it. I thought it was okay. I read the Bible every day. I was reading every day. You know, I was having a short conversation with the Lord every day. You know, I was, the Bible says, be careful that you don't get overwhelmed with the concerns of this life. You know that? And we get overwhelmed. We get into the routine of going to work. I got to go to work. I got to go to the gym. I got to, you know, do this, do that. Do the routines. And we don't realize that's why God tells one of the churches, return to your first love again. Come back to your first love. I'm trying to revive my fire again. When, when, when the Lord spoke to me, I called Larry. Larry, I got to start again. And Larry, being an obedient servant, went to the pastor. The pastor, being a man of God, said, let's do it. So here we are. Let's do it. Huh? When I beat, when we moved to Cuba, Cuba. dude, <laughs> that'll fire me up, ain't it? Okay. Huh? 51.12. Okay. Let's close. Let's close. There's, there's a verse that I'm telling people right now. There's a verse that I'm telling people right now that are not listening and not coming. Okay? It's an Amos. It's a scary one. Okay? It's in the book of Amos, 
chapter 9. Uh, no, 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 no. Where's that verse, babe? Amos, let me read Amos, Amos 8, uh, 7 through 12 first. Let's finish, with that. Well, let's finish here in Amos. This other scripture I will carry on, and the next time we meet in two weeks, we'll go from here. We've explained Ezekiel 38. Two weeks from now, we might not be here. The fulfillment of this prophecy can take place. It's suddenly. God says how many times in the word? I acted suddenly. Okay? So, we're, if God willing, we'll gather here in two weeks and proceed forward. Huh? We already set the dates. Yeah, I, yeah, we just set the dates. I'll show you them in a minute. The, the, the Saturday after the next Saturday. The last, we're going to do the last Saturday this month and then two the next month. Okay, that's what's scheduled, baby. All right? I'm sorry for not touching base. Okay. <laughs> okay. Two weeks from now, this could be fulfilled. If two weeks were gathered here, bring friends. Bring people. Let's talk. Let's share the gospel with them. Let's share. This is the gospel. Okay? The gospel is not what Jesus and the disciples did. The gospel is the whole word of God. Okay? Now, look what it says here in Amos chapter 8, verse 7. The Lord has sworn by the... These are key verses that we need to ask. What's he talking about? He says, the Lord has sworn, sworn by the pride of Jacob... I will never forget anything they have done. For a long time, for a long time, I've told my wife, I've told several people, there are sins in America that we have to answer for, okay? There are things that have happened in America that have to, yeah, that have to be corrected. So God holds a list, and if there's repentance, what does God say? He forgives. If there's no repentance, then there's a consequence for that, okay? So the Bible says that the righteous and the wicked suffer together, okay? So we're watching in our country right now. Things happen that are, uh, this little thing, man, there you go. We're watching things in this country happen that we're sad to see, that is breaking our hearts, and we're watching it. And we got to understand that God holds governments and nations accountable for the sins of their past, Okay? And there has to be a justification. God has to bring a justification for the things that have happened in our country and in other countries. Okay, so um, right here it says, God says, I will never forget anything they have done. Will not the land tremble for this? Now, when an, this is why I preached this so hard during COVID and during the elections, that we needed to turn around. We needed a turnaround, okay? We needed Roe versus Way overturned. We needed it overturned. We needed things to happen, okay? We needed, we needed correction in our election system. We, needed, we, needed the, we need these things. God is watching and he's saying, to whom much is given, much is expected, okay? And he's looking at our leaders and he's saying, you corrupt little people, man. You're misleading my sheep. You're misleading my people. He's going to hold them accountable. He's going to hold them accountable, okay? And it says right here, the whole land will rise like the Nile. It will be stirred and then sink like the river Egypt. In that day, declares the sovereign Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon. I will darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your religious feast into mourning. He's going to deal with the church on the big scale. He's going to deal with the church. He's going to bring sorrow to the church for not being awake, okay? The other six churches in Revelation, woe to them. They're here in America. God's going to hold them accountable. Pastors that are sitting up there watering down the gospel, doing things they should not be doing, Ezekiel 34 says he's going to hold them accountable. He's going to deal with them, okay? We being the remnant, like I said, David says, examine me, cleanse me, Sanctify me, Daniel. God told Daniel, in that day I shall sanctify and purify many. We need to be that church. You heard it today. Go home tonight. Let's, let's repent. Let's get things right so that we could be God's vessels during this time. Okay? And it says right here, 
I will make, he says, I will turn their religious feasts into mourning and all your singing into weeping. I will make all of you wear sackcloths and shaved heads. I will make that time like mourning for the only son. And the end of it will be a bitter day. This is key. And I tell this to a lot of people. The days are coming, declares the sovereign Lord, where I will send a famine through the land. Not a famine of food or thirst of water, but a famine of hearing the word of the Lord. Men will stagger from sea to sea and wander from north to east, searching for the word of God, but they will not find it because you will have been raptured. That's the rapture. The righteous aren't speaking no more. We're not here no more. We've been removed. That's what I told several people today. I go, you better come hear God's word because when God removes his church, you, you, will, you will beg for God's word. You don't know it, and there'll be nobody. That's why Jesus told his disciples, work during the day because the nighttime cometh where no man can work. The Chinese leader, the Russian leader, Persia, Islam is not going to let us preach no more. They're going to burn us to the ground. You won't be preaching in that time. When they've conquered the world, you won't be preaching. The Lord did show me. He goes, you're going to be preaching in Chinese to the Chinese soldier. Huh? Or Cuba. Isn't it? Yeah, so I'm, I'm all for you know? You know? Cuba. Yeah, I'm, yeah Cuba, Cuba, Cuba would be better. <laughs> they got mangoes. <laughs> yeah. You know? But, yeah, we laugh. We laugh. It's good to laugh. It's good to laugh, you know, to go through this. We're going to end right here. I like to do something here. My wife, my wife is going to, the Lord gave my wife something, and I'm going to let her take it from here. It's prayer. The Holy Spirit is big on my mind right now, and she's going to lead you guys in prayer right now. And we're going to finish with this. I think what we're doing here is significant because of the time and because of the position of the church. I mean, I was intrigued when, I came here and I said, because the place of the church, where's this is Crown Point, right? Cedar Lake. Cedar Lake. But it's right outside of Crown Point, okay? It's in the center of Northwest Indiana. Northwest Indiana is experiencing a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. And we need churches. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. So you need to bring friends. I, I will continue to invite, um, babe. Come up here and do what God called you to do, okay? And we're going to pray together. This, this group right here, it reminds me of my dad's church. It reminds me of the Holy Spirit moving in my dad's church, you know? They were people that came from all over, Mexico, Puerto Rico, and did a big work in East Chicago, you know? And it was a Holy Spirit work. It was a poor church. They had no money. You know, it was poor church. They enjoyed having potlucks and, and just working together, but they, they would do work in the community. And, and, and my dad nipped it in the bud, the gang problem right away. He confronted it, you know. And, and right now, I feel that spirit here, that, that, that this group here is a group that's going to speak right now. And it's going to show the love of Christ. And the love of Christ comes in many forms, Okay. Telling somebody that they're living in their sin and they're going to hell, that's the love of Christ. You know, they may not look at you that way, but that's the love of Christ. The type of way I'm speaking to my kids and my friends, you know, I got a lot of friends from my old gang. She, she, she says, you got a great relationship with your friends that's lasted 40, 50 years, you know. But I'm the one sharing the gospel with them, you know. I'm not, they're not going to no church. They, they won't go into a church. You know, they'll ask me for prayer. They'll talk to me, you know. So I'm in a very unique position. Go ahead, babe. I see some of the faces that I saw in the church. I drive a truck, and um, a few days ago. You got to speak louder, babe. And I asked, I kept saying, you know, I asked her, well, is this you? Is this my mother?
screen now. Anyhow, the way I saw it, the Lord was saying this is a final call and that he's chosen you, but there's some things wrong. He says that he wants repentance and he wants it tonight. He wants you to take that hidden sin and give it to God. He says even the bad thoughts, you think you're living a right life, but there are thoughts in your head that's not godly, and he wants you to give those thoughts to him. And so this is what I thought, I saw. Uh, you come up here and give all that to the altar, to take it to the altar of God, but this is not the altar you take it to. You're going to go into the throne room of God at his altar and give it to him, just you and God, and you get on your knees. If you can't, you can stand will go to the altar in front of him in the throne room, that throne where his robe just fills the temple. You can go right to God. Don't leave because when you finish, you raise your hand. When you finish talking to God, raise your hand. Then a righteous person here is going to come and pray with you. It's up to you whether you want to share what's going on or not, but they're going to pray for you. At the end, Pastor Jacob is going to come and pray deliverance over everyone. And that's, that's basically it. Okay, so, so um, we're going to... Let's step forward.